Cam Jurgens once again, is the real deal. Did you see the way Jack Driscoll and all those guys were blocking for the second group and how much effort they gave? It, you didn't know the difference between the starters and the second guys. That goes back to Jeff Stoutland setting an attitude with that group. That group was so well coached, getting up on second levels, technically sound. Football Monday, National Football Show. Appreciate everybody stepping in each and every single Monday through Friday as you do every single week. Thank you so much. Please, as I say, hit the like button. Um, One step closer to September 11th and the Lions, right? This past weekend. And I'm going to give you observations on both offense and defense here. And get this. I understand it's exhibition football. But there is a mindset. And I'm going to show you the differences in coaching on the Eagles. When you got a certain coach that coaches a group, the way he coaches it, and the way the other inexperienced coaches are coaching their groups. We'll get to that here in a second, but obviously a lot of NFL news. A lot of cuts are going to start coming down. Maybe there's going to be some potential players out there and the running back and in the safety position that the Eagles could maybe target. I thought the backs played well. I'm going to get to offense and defense here, my takeaways. Um, there's going to be some significant players that you could potentially bring into your football unit, and they could be productive. I mean, obviously, the safety position with the Eagles right now is a major concern. All right. Gary Cobb, by the way, in hour number two at 4.30 Eastern time from Fox, Philadelphia. Let me give you my spin first, okay, on the offense. I'll tell you something, man. I kind of hit on them not practicing the run game. That was an exhibition and how you run the football with the Philadelphia Eagles. That was an exhibition. Cam Jurgens once again, is the real deal. Did you see the way Jack Driscoll and all those guys were blocking for the second group and how much effort they gave? It, you didn't know the difference between the starters and the second guys. That goes back to Jeff Stoutland setting an attitude with that group. That group was so well coached, getting up on second levels, technically sound, there was not 14 play, 17 play drives, most of them running the ball. Fantastic job of coaching by Jeff Soutland. That was an exhibition on how you run the football. My worries of them not working on it in the training camp were put to rest in that game against the Browns. The Browns got some formidable people up front too. The Browns have a pretty good unit, and they knocked those dudes off the ball with their second guys. Now, they were playing their twos, but just the way they were coached with the mentality, man, they were like war dogs, just going after people, knocking people on their asses. Spectacular coaching. I'll tell you two people who want a job in Philadelphia. Gainwell in Boston, damn good job of running the ball. They're still not the guys. On an every weekend basis, they're not the guys. However... If I'm Howie Roseman and I'm Nick Sirianni, I come away with that game saying one of these guys wants the starting job. Miles Sanders is giving that opportunity right now for one of those guys to take his gig. They ran well. I thought they caught the ball out of the backfield well. Every single thing you want in a running back duo, because that's what you have to have in today's NFL, that was well done by those young men. Again, against another well-coached football team. And I think the Browns have a well-coached football team. Some of you are going to go, well, it's twos and threes. I look at preparation, I look at effort, and I look at technically sound players. Okay? That's where I'm at with this. You notice I'll never mention the score, ever. Those two men want a job. One of those guys wants to start for the Philadelphia Eagles in the backfield. Like I said, they're not good enough. But to me, 
they went out and put a great effort. A for effort for those guys. Fantastic. Once again, the teaching of Jeff Stoutland. He is such a spectacular coach. There is not an offensive lineman on that Eagles team that is not getting coached by pick a doctor, Bill Gates, um, pick somebody that is just Jeff Zuckerberg. This guy is the guy in the NFL today. That's how you teach people how to play O-line. That's O-line work at its best. Pass probe. Jurgens understanding odd and even fronts. The way that they were slip blocking, counter trays, everything was outstanding. Outstanding. You can't have a better teacher. than who. I'll, I'll tell you this. May I make a point to you? that Jeff Stoutland is more valuable in that Eagle organization than Nick Sirianni is. If you were to tell me who the most impressive coach is on that staff, it's not the head coach, the DC or the OC. It's the offensive line coach. They are, I I mean, anybody cut from the Eagles from the O-line, if I were the Giants or the Buccaneers, I immediately am going to call their agents up and say, do you want to come play in Tampa? Fantastic. What a job. Okay. By the way, wide receiver Kane is better than Jalen Rager. He's outplayed him. He out efforts him. He out desires him. Jump balls. Kane's a better player. But that won't go down the way the roster will look by the time we get to September. Kane's a better player. Probably end up dropping his ass on the uh, practice squad. But he's outplayed Jalen Rager. Jalen Rager needed to do something. And 17 play drives. He played okay. But okay's not going to keep you a roster spot. Well, maybe in Philly with him it will. Now to Gardner Minshew. There's not a quarterback duo in the NFL that you could make this distinction. That if you lose your starting quarterback, you won't have that much of a drop-off with your backup. If you go around the league, if any NFL team loses their starting quarterback, maybe in Indianapolis, maybe, with Nick Foles. But I, I personally believe the way that Gardner Minshew runs that offense, I think he could win just as many games as Jalen Hurts can win. And to me, it would be a more of a pass-happy offensive attack instead of a running attack. I'm not suggesting to you that Gardner Mitchell's better. He's a better passer, though. And that's evident, just the way he throws the ball. It's evident the way he sits back. And some would go, Sills, he's going against twos. Well, he's also working with twos. And he still made it happen. 17, 14 play drives. Extending plays, moving around in the pocket. If they lost Jalen Hurts, the Eagle season's not over. If you lose Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, that season's over. Again, it's Jalen Hurts' team. I'm not sitting here saying that there's a quarterback controversy. I'm just telling you that that backup quarterback, if your quarterback, which he could be prone to as we get into his career here because of the way he runs the ball, has to miss some time. Gardner Mitchell is very capable of taking that offense over and winning ball games. He was very effective. I liked the way he threw the ball. And absolutely, I thought he raised his value as being one of the most important pieces on the Philadelphia Eagles. I got to tell you something, too. I'll get through here with, my, with the observations, and I'll tell you also what Howie has done here. Okay? I mean... I don't care what you think of his arm. He's more accurate than Jalen Hurts. And you're not going to have that much of a drop-off. There's nowhere in the NFL, unless you're talking bad quarterbacks, where you see the starter and the backup pretty close to one another. No place in the NFL unless you're talking about really bad teams. I thought the kid played well. 
by the way, I love this kid, Jack Driscoll. Okay. I really love the guy, Jack Driscoll, man. That whole unit is impressive. They really are impressive. Um, I thought the old line again, shut my mouth when it came to my concerns of them not practicing the run game. Cause I kind of broached that last week. Cause I heard um, somebody talking about them not practicing it. It was an exhibition of football and how you run the ball. And I'll say this to you about Howie Roseman too. Um, look at what Howie has built up in assets. Jack Driscoll, Andre Dillard, um, Milton Williams, Jalen Rager, for whatever reason, if you were able to put him in a package, look at what he could trade for to try to improve the safety position or the running back position with the kind of assets that he had if he wanted to move them. Okay, Andre Dillard, to me, is maybe one of the most important next to Gardner Minshew players on the Eagles because if you have a catastrophic injury to your tackles, and we've already seen tackles go down in Tampa, you got a guy that is very capable of being able to step in. So he is a huge asset. That guy, of all the players you have on the team that you can move, could par probably garner a one. Okay? Milton Williams could probably get you a two. That kid's putting good tape, at least in the organized team practices that we had on Thursday and Friday. Surely wasn't the game. But I really love what they've done when it comes to that offense. That offense was, again, you're going like this. Philosophically, they knock people off the ball. They just completely knock people off the ball. 14 play, 17 play, sustained drives. It's how you wear someone's ass out. Well done, man. Well done on that side of the ball. Now let's get to the other side here. Well, when your defensive coaches don't give a shit about um, exhibition football, it resonates with the entire unit. They didn't get off the bus. There were gaping holes, soft safety coverages, soft on the perimeter, gaping knocked off the line of scrimmage. Jordan Day was caught in traffic. Nicobe Dean caught in traffic. They were destroyed at the line of scrimmage and some would go sills it's twos well there's a mentality jeff stoutland had his guys ready did he not stoutland's guys knocked people off the ball twos threes fours five six sevens it didn't matter right you couldn't tell the difference between the eagle second team guys and the eagle first team guys that's coaching mentality winning the Eagle defense didn't show up. Poor angles, poor tackling. Front and center. Gaping holes. Gaping. The Cleveland Brown O-line knocked those front seven guys on their ass. There was nothing to be cheering about. I heard somebody say that Dean played well. I went, where in the world did you see that? Jordan Davis got spun around twice. How many times did they get out on the perimeter? They didn't set the edges. I mean, Cleveland was running at the perimeter at will. You know, defense, I tell people this all the time. Defense, my friends, is not a position. It's an attitude. And that attitude has to resonate with your entire group. You got to want to hit somebody. You got to want to shed tackles. You got to want to be in the right position to make plays. None of that was on display against the Browns. It's almost like they took the Thursday and Friday organized team practices and said, hey, we put enough on film and that's good enough. And then you got killed in that game with lack of effort. You didn't, it didn't look like they cared. That's my observation. Poor angles, gaping holes. That's a give a shit thing. Give a shit. You know, people go like this. So what do you make it at 21 game win streak in Baltimore? Not much of it, except for this. They got an attitude in Baltimore where every time they step on the field, and they want to put film out there for players 
and for coaches to evaluate you, you got a winning attitude. You're trying to create a winning attitude with that. When you knock someone on their ass, that's a winning attitude. That was not a winning effort on Sunday. And some would go, Sills, it's, dude, if you step on the field one time, you step on the field a thousand times. If you're going to do something, do it to the best of your ability. But the coaches have a mentality and the organization has a mentality that that shit doesn't matter to them. Jeff Stoutland, it mattered. You saw it. You saw it, did you not? Look at the difference between how Stoutland coached his O-line and how that defensive line and front seven were coached against the Browns. One team cared. The other part of the team didn't. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you saw something different, as some of you with blinders on will say. That's a freaking mentality. You are not good enough as a football team yet to throw your helmet on the field and say, here we are. You're not good enough for that. Because you'll get beat like you did last year against the Giants with that mentality. Hell, any team will get beat. Last year, the Packers got their shit pushed in by the Saints in the opener. Oh, we got the Saints. Not so fast. They got killed. When you're close like this, and we're coming up to September now, you can't put shit like that on film. You can't put that on film. I don't care you get beat. Especially in an exhibition game. I care the way you get beat. You got to give a shit, man. You got to put effort out there. Put effort on tape. You're also, if you're one of those bubble guys, you're auditioning for 31 other football teams. That ain't getting it done. Not very good. That defense was soft. Jonathan Gannon is once again in the bullseye. I'll tell you this, guys. One thing is for sure. I'm starting to slide off of Jalen Hurts here and starting to go over to Nick Sirianni and Jonathan Gannonmore and Shane Steichen. Okay? Kevin Stefanski's team looked pretty good. Especially with, think of, think of all the chaos they have in that building too. Deshaun Watson, who's starting, the whole Baker Mayfield BS. And they're able to go out there and put some good plays on tape. By the way, I thought their defensive front seven, they were knocked off the ball, but they were trying. They were trying. Boy, Jeff Stoutland, man, what a coach. Had his guys primed, ready, rock and roll. They were great. I tell you, coach a unit, man. You think Jeff Stoutland gives a shit if he's got his first or second or third team guys out there? You better give maximum effort to be in that group. And by the way, it's an honor to be in that group in Philly, isn't it? That second team played like it's an honor to be on that group, isn't it? It means something to be an old lineman in Philadelphia. Think about what I'm saying here. When you play for Jeff Stoutland and the Eagles, it means something. You're being coached by the best. And the best are in front of you. Shit, man. That's the best unit maybe in football. And they play like it. I'm watching that second group, not that Cleveland Browns second team team into the dirt. They're knocking them around like they're donkey dicks. I'm sitting there going, that's impressive. That's impressive. I'd love to be in a Jeff Stoutland meeting. That guy, Cam Jurgens, as advertised. As advertised. That kid, Jonathan Gannon, on that side of the ball. Let me go there now. Jesus, crime any guy. Watch this. Well, I don't want to show anything else. And I, and I agree. You don't want to get a trend chart going right now. I completely agree. You don't want to get a trend chart for um, Detroit right now. They got last year's game. Different personnel this year. And what you don't want to do is you want to be as vanilla as you can. This Dolphin game, 
they're probably going to even do crazier things outside the box that they'll never do during the regular season because they don't want to get a a tendency chart going for Dan Campbell and his guys. But you know what the only thing you have to worry, don't have to worry about is? You don't have to worry about anybody being aggressive. When you got a defensive-minded coach that's not aggressive, look at how it shows up in just the effort. When you got an aggressive old line coach that mauls people, look at how that looked. Did you not see the difference in coaching? Surely you were looking at that. You don't look at scoreboards in the exhibition season. You look at how positions are being coached, how they're playing. Do they care? Those organized practices for the defensive side of the football, and you know what? I heard Rob earlier on Sports Take say this. Well, you know, they felt comfortable because they won the organized practices. Shit, dude, you should want to win every time you step on a football field. That's surrendering shit. That's... Jack says he saw the difference. Justin goes, I was at the game. I saw it. Bob, I think Dean's going to be a player. But you can't have the defensive line guys getting knocked off the football into the scrape lanes. He got caught in traffic. He's not physical enough to take on those guys for 17 straight games. He's not. And then again, that's a league thing. You don't see LeVon Kirkland's anymore in the middle or Ray Lewis's. You see them hybrid cover two type linebackers that could get back in coverage. It's a league thing and how they're going and looking for that type of player. But when he gets knocked and the tackles are knocked into him, he has no chance making plays. Poor angles, poor tackling, poor effort. Poor effort. Poor effort. Davis looked tired. It's a league issue. It's the way they're being prepared. Now, let's bring it back full circle. Some would go, Sills, it's the second exhibition game. Why get so upset? Because like I said, every time you step on a football field and they're taking film of you, and there's a there's a record of you, you should want that to be a good record. Not a lame-ass, half-ass effort. If I'm trying to make one of these teams in the league and if I can't make the Eagles, and you play defense against the Browns, I wouldn't want to show that. This guy's got knocked off the football, dude. And And by the way, Gardner Minshew has shown everyone that if there is an injury at the quarterback position in Philly, they could, he could take the Eagles just as far. Just as far. Run the ball the way they ran it. 17, 14 play drives. Nate Sudfeld can maybe win games with that approach. Okay? That right there... The way they knock guys off the ball when you start putting the big heroes out there, the number ones, man. Man, if you get this too. If you're Jordan Mulatto, you're Jason Kelsey, and you're watching that game film, and you're watching the boys behind you as they're the next heir apparent to your position one day, you got to be so proud of your room. Great effort, guys. That's how you beat people up. Must have been such a great thing to be in that room. I wouldn't want to been in that defensive line room. Slipped, hooked, slipped, knocked off the ball, out of gas, all day. Oh, wait, the Eagle threes were better than the Browns threes, probably. Jonathan Gannon, (laughs) they're going to go like this. Why in the world would you give that guy the benefit of the doubt when he doesn't have an aggressive mentality? How many defensive coordinators have you ever heard of that aren't aggressive. Isn't that an innate trait 
you want to have with your coordinator where he, he's aggressive? He wants, to, he wants to dictate the pace of the game? Shit, man. Look, they're a good team. And the reason I'm doing this is because I care, because they are a good team. That team could go far. That team could go far this year. Don't blow it. Don't blow it by outthinking yourselves. The way they ran the ball and threw the ball, if Jalen Hurts plays the way that Gardner Minshew played, the Eagles are going to win a lot of football games. That's the kind of approach. I don't want to see 38 passes. What was Minshew? 14 to 16? 250 yards? That's how you move it, dude. The whole thing, man, was really impressive on offense. Defense? Again, you, you, you know what the local media and the radio stations and others are going to do. They're going to say this about Gannon. Well, they don't want to show anything to Detroit. What? You mean playing tough? Dude, playing tough. Okay? I mean, you can't game plan against a team playing tough. By the way, I'll say this to you. If I were the Lions and I saw the way that Shane Steichen had Gardner Mitchell the way that they came out and did that 17 and then 14 play drive. You know what I would say? Well, I hope they don't do that to us. Because that was aggressive. The offensive line in that game against the Browns was more aggressive than the defensive line. Anytime you hear that proclamation, you had a problem. You had a problem. I just, I, I, I do not believe in that defensive coordinator. Okay? I think he's a bookworm. I, Jack, I don't think they played like shit. I think that offense with their line saved the day in Mitchell's play. Wide receivers too, by the way. Like I said, the kid Kane's outplayed Rager. He's outplayed him. There's no getting around that. He outplayed him. Throughout the entire camp, he's outplayed him. Stoutland is the only coach in that building that I wouldn't fire if something went south this year. He's the most valuable coach in that building. No one else. And by the way, so let me get this right on your special teams. So is Howie going to get into the first week of the regular season and just – slap some players out there and him and Nick are going to come up with kickoff and punt return and punt block and hands teams and all this. Is that how they're going to do it? Atrocious. Absolutely not very coached. Well, that made any sense. Special teams is terrible. And it shows the lack of attention that they've given to it. Hey, I love Devin Allen. I thought that was a, First, you know, from what I understand, too, that's like the first time they let him break into the open. That's a good play, man. That was a good play for him. I don't know if he makes the team. Maybe they put him on practice squad and see if they could bring him along and develop him. But I like that play. I thought it was a good play. No one was catching that kid, that's for sure. Plus, I'd like to see him drop his ass if I can on, if I can on special teams. You know, I want to see if I could get him maybe some special teams work too, right? So, great job. Just a great job by the O-line, horrible job by the D-line. Um, coaching is my biggest question on this team. Brian, you're right. That's what I completely now have come to the conclusion of, okay? To me, it's, it's, it's coaching. I am 100% in agreement with you. The issues on the football team, if there's going to be losses this year, it'll be coach's result. Stoutland going to give Gannon one of those Buddy Ryan 
he, he was fabulous the way he had his guys prepared. The second team, Eagle O-line. You know, I said this last week to you. Hey, Jesse, Jurgens is everything is advertised. He is everything is advertised. Nick isn't getting fired after two years. I never said he was. And if you believe that, and you don't know that Lori operates, I never said he was getting fired. But someone's ass will be on the firing block if this football team doesn't fulfill proclamation and what their destiny can be because this team should go far. Vic Fangio, with, well, hey, they're not getting a new coordinator right now. You're going with what you have. I just, you know, no, no. Jay, I don't think it's Gannon's afraid to coach men. I just don't think he knows how to coach veterans. Not everything is head on the three gap. Maybe Fletcher has a technique that he cheats with to get to the three gap and so that he could take on a guard who's trying to slip or hook him. Okay, listen to your guys. But you got to get a little bit more fire in there, man. Slasher says, Jordan Davis, I'm concerned about, honestly. Slasher, he just has to play more plays, which means he has to be in better shape. He's not in good shape. Again, a league thing, though. It's a league thing. I am a... No, Q. Q goes, Sills rooting for backup Minshew on tweets. I was rooting for him. Because to me, do you know what it's like to be on a second team and there's a guy in front of you you know you're better than? It's frustrating. And I wanted him to play well. You're damn right I did. He increased his value and he solidified a seat on the Philadelphia Eagle team. His, his job is not guaranteed. As a backup, Gardner not better than Hurts. Who the F said that? Who said that? I said you wouldn't have as much of a drop-off. No one has ever said that. I reiterated that and said that. That he's not, it's his team. I've never said that. But I'm rooting for him because he played well. Good for him. Jesus, criminy. Do you think Nick's, no? Yeah, it's Jalen's team. They've built this team for Jalen Hurts, not for Gardner Minshew. This team's not built for Gardner Minshew. This team is built for Jalen Hurts. The same way that that team in Miami is built for Tug of Viola right now, a left-handed passer. These guys are given the keys and they're going to go in there. My point again is, if Jalen does go down, just like in the Jets game last year, this kid is not going to have a gigantic drop-off in quarterback play like you see everywhere else. I can't even tell you the backup quarterback in Los Angeles with the Jets is, or Rams. I can't even tell you who the backup, oh, it's Kyle Trask. In Tampa, you're not going anywhere with Blaine Gabbert and Kyle Trask in Tampa. But this guy, Minshew, can can hold down the fort for a game or two. You're not going to have drop-off. Jesus. They built it for Jalen. Let's hope he – absolutely, man. And by the way, I thought the offense had a punch and a – and, and, and a great aggressiveness to him. That's because of the O-line coaching. This team is not built for Jalen Hurts, Sills. This team does not extend his strengths. His strengths is running. It's not passing. And what you saw in a 17-14 play drive, it's exactly what Jalen Hurts does. Like I said... In the open, and I'll rewind it. If Jalen Hurts plays inside of the way that Gardner Minshew played, the way that they play called, the Eagles are going to win a lot of games. They're going to win a lot of games. 
Now, if they get that other side playing night, and I get Fangio wants, or Fangio, excuse me, Gannon wants not to show his hand here. This team is built for a strong arm QB. I, I, I think this team is built for a mobile quarterback right now. I do. Brian says, I didn't like Jim Swartz, but I really miss him now. Absolutely. Anything's better than what you have. I mean, honestly, I mean, the Cleveland Browns had gaping holes. If that was a real game, okay, just the way that the effort was, you're going to go, well, it's twos. Well, the Browns twos also. And Stoutland's twos look like the ones. There's a difference in coaching. And in caring. That's how I saw it. Again, poor angles, poor tackling. How did Hurts play against the Jets in the preseason? He was good, man. Six for six, 80 yards, moved the chains. Same thing what Minshew did. You could tell the defense was not coached up. It was almost like they told them, let's go vanilla. You know, Paul, I agree 100%. I completely agree on Cam Jurgens. Okay. I completely agree. Five star. Again, the reason that you here, I'm I'm going to, I'm going to tell you guys. One of the things and why I'm going here in what I'm saying to you now, when you are a great sculptor or a painter and you're fine tuning that work of art, you're not making these gigantic chips or these giant strokes with your brush. You're doing the littlest, tiniest thing to accentuate what gifts you have and what you've put on canvas. That's what a great football team is. The Eagles have assembled enough right now. Now it's fine-tuning the loose ends. The loose ends are the things that get you beat in the end. They're there now. From where this football team was, where they won four ball games a couple of years ago, it's unbelievable. And how much they've made these leaps. You're fine-tuning. I don't believe in the defensive coaches. Okay? I I do not. I just when I look at and again, I you know, and I have to remember that going down the line, this is an NFL deal when it comes to conditioning and getting guys in shape. Okay? But I wanted to point this out to you guys, how important it is. When you do this, look at the way Jeff Stoutland coached his guys. Tell me they look like the ones. The effort. Knocking guys off the ball. Gaping holes. Tell me you didn't see that. And you went like this. Man. Jack Driscoll and them dudes. Hey. And like I said last week, so is it really a bad thing that you don't make starting five of the Eagles? Really? That's like asking to make the starting five with the Golden State Warriors. Hey, I'm a really great player. Okay, well, those guys are the champs. If you're not starting in Philly, that's not a bad thing, my friends. If you're not starting in New York with the Giants, that's a horrible thing. If I were the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'd be calling Howie Roseman right now. What do you want for Andre Dillard? Howie would go a one. And Leonard Fournette. Look at where he is right now. Think of that for a minute. So when teams start calling Howie now for Andre Dillard, 
his value shot up with all these injuries and in O-linemen. Think about the injuries that you're seeing. How he would go like this. I want a one in your back. Be patient. This guy's got some, he, this guy's got some assets here. He's got some assets. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about Nicobe Dean. We'll do that. My friends, don't forget our friends at Morgan and Morgan where the fee is free means this. If you are hurt or injured on a job, promise you this. There is not an attorney firm out there in America that will have your back when it comes to getting you the fair compensation you and your family so deserve. Past 30 years, make no mistake about it. Past 30 years, they've collected over $13.5 billion in compensation for their clients. How's that for you, right? Okay, they've got attorneys all over the United States of America, 800 strong in offices in Philly, New York, and in Florida are there to do battle for you. <laughs> for the people, it's not a slogan. Call them 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. Call us free. Consultation's free. 800-512-1600. Open 24-7, seven days a week. And when you call them, tell them Big Sill sent you. When choosing a lawyer for your injury case, you may ask, does the size of the law firm matter? Well, of course it does. The insurance company, they're huge with unlimited resources. And whether your case is big or small, they're built to bully you out of the money you're owed. But here's the good news. We're big too, the biggest actually. And we're built to fight to make them pay for all that was taken from you. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. After a car crash, the big insurance companies you see advertising on TV, they may try to downplay your case and might say, it's only a fender bender or it's just a herniated disc. I worry that some law firms fall for this BS. Not us. We put ourselves in your shoes and ask, what would it be like to be in your pain for the rest of our lives? A million dollars wouldn't be enough for me. There's only one Morgan & Morgan for the people.com. 